Between the years 2010 and 2013, I undertook the design and construction of a sizable radio-controlled model of the Belanca Super Decathlon, marking my first venture into projects of such magnitude. In early 2014, I documented the CAD design process in a video, alongside various other videos chronicling the model's construction. Additionally, a dedicated web page was established under the domain belancasuperdecathlon.com, although this domain is no longer active. Subsequently, due to my involvement in designing other aircraft models, I transitioned the content to the domain okrunway.com, where interested parties can access pertinent links, including those to the model plans available for download. The impetus behind creating a new video stems from my decision to recreate the model design within the Fusion 360 CAD program. Initially, the design was crafted using a different CAD program, with offerings comprising 2D drawings in DXF and DWG formats, a long three-dimensional plan in PDF format. The redesign process was extensive, armoured at incorporating previously unavailable constructional details into the model, while some minor alterations were introduced compared to the previous version. Approximately 95% of the design remains unaltered, with the construction methodology remaining intact. Reflecting on my current expertise, I acknowledge potential adjustments I might have made to certain aspects of the model. However, I deliberately maintained the original design to facilitate ease of modification for fellow modelers who possess the original plans and wish to implement alterations. Among the comments received regarding the original design, one highlighted the inclusion of flaps, a feature absent in the original airplane. Such deviations from the original specifications are not uncommon among modelers, often driven by practical considerations. In my case, the decision to incorporate flaps stemmed from the desire to enhance the model's suitability for operation on short runways and its ability to fly at slower speeds. However, for those prioritizing scale precision, the option to modify the design exists, allowing for the omission of flaps. My overarching goal was to create a versatile model, extending beyond a mere aerobatic replica. I aspired to build a model suitable for glider towing and recreational flying, while still capable of executing basic aerobatic maneuvers. Similar to my other designs, the CAD drawing exhibits thoughtful use of colour to enhance clarity and facilitate easy identification of materials and their corresponding structures. The colour-coded scheme uses blue for aluminum, black for steel, green for polystyrene and yellow for fibreglass. Minor deviations exist in this scheme, such as certain small plastic parts appearing in black. Wooden components are also colour-coded based on the type of wood utilised. Broadly, four wood types were employed, poplar, plywood, spruce bars, oak blocks and balsa wood sheeting. The drawing is structured in a browser tree, employing hierarchical organisation that extends to sub-assemblies containing main elements such as fuselage, wings, stabilisers, etc. Each of these sub-assemblies can be further subdivided into other logical sub-assemblies, such as motor cowl, landing gear, wooden parts, or ruder servo assembly. This division extends to even lower levels, including servo arms, screws, nuts, etc. The model was designed using a top-down approach, integrating all components into a single file. Due to its high complexity, a design history was not recorded. The drawing exclusively consists of bodies, with no sketches incorporated. The fuselage construction is based on traditional plywood parts assembled together. The plywood construction is strengthened by diagonal spruce spars at the rear part of the fuselage. The cabin section, holding the wings, uses sandwich formers made from plywood and a glass fibre sheet.
The main gear legs were fashioned from 10 mm thick duraluminum, while the wheel discs were lathe turned from the same material. Each wheel comprises two halves of the disc fastened together by six screws. The wheel tire measures 50 say 200 mm. The discs feature two ball bearings each. Fiberglass was used to mold the wheel pants on a positive mold. The landing gear legs are affixed to the fuselage by two screws each. They can be easily unmounted for transportation if required. The entire design was crafted with the intention of facilitating easy transportation. Many parts of the model can be removed for this purpose, while some are designed for easy access and maintenance. Let's start from the front of the model. The spinner is crafted from fiberglass with an aluminum backplate. The propeller is a standard wooden propeller of the recommended size. After removing the propeller and spinner, the motor cowl can be taken off by unscrewing eight screws. The CAD plan includes a drawing of the engine in use. However, it is essentially a mock-up devoid of internal details, such as missing spark plugs and valves. Its purpose is solely for dimensional reference. Some parts in the design are provided with a red decal with the text Grounded. This indicates that the part is grounded in the terminology of Fusion 360, enabling joint animation of other parts. Let me demonstrate this with an example of the motor assembly. When this former is grounded, the propeller can revolve, and the choke and throttle servo arms can move. When the former is ungrounded, it becomes difficult to animate the propeller and servo movements, although it is still possible to demonstrate the possibility of removing the motor assembly. The entire motor assembly can be removed from the fuselage by unscrewing eight screws, allowing for easy maintenance and access to the motor, servos, electronics, tanks, etc. Two top screws are not shown in this view. Additionally, please note this hole, which provides access to two adjustable screws of the carburetor. These screws are for carburetor idle and full throttle adjustment. I found it useful to attach a straw to each carburetor screw and pull both straws through the hole in the plywood former and out through the motor cowl. This enables the use of a long, thin screwdriver to adjust the carburetor without needing to remove the motor cowl. The motor is secured using four aluminum spacers and screws, while two aluminum silencers were employed, although the fixtures for the silencers are not shown as they will depend on the specific type used. The design depicts the silencers used in the original model. Similarly, the original electronics and their locations are shown in the design. The ignition battery switch is of magnetic type and can be mounted anywhere below the motor cowl surface. The depicted location of the switch is just one possibility if it needs to be a part of the removable motor assembly. The main batteries for the RC systems and servos are located in the front part of the fuselage on both sides and are accessible from the front side within the motor cowl. The door is openable using hinges similar to those found on the real airplane. A simple lock was 3D printed. When opened, the door provides access to the electronics on the right side, with the design showing the original equipment used. All equipment was installed on a desk mounted via small shock absorbers to the main fuselage board. Similarly, the electronics on the left side are mounted and accessible through an open-able window. Another part that enhances the model's appearance is the fully equipped dashboard. The dashboard is cut from plywood and the apparatus was created using a 3D printer. In the original model, the dashboard was only represented as a photo image. It is somewhat hidden behind the oblique front former holding the wings. If this poses an issue, it's easy to decrease the width of the horizontal part which hides the dashboard. A dashboard cover was made from balsa sheeting on the original model, but for convenience, it's more suitable to make it from a piece of thin sheet duraluminum painted black, as shown in this design. The windshield was fashioned from a transparent sheet plastic called Axpet. 
the windshield ceiling was laminated directly onto the windshield and cabin cover using fiberglass, separated by a layer of adhesive tape. After hardening, the ceiling was removed and cut to its final shape. Subsequently, the windshield was secured in place using glue. I manually shaped the windshield by finding the right form using a piece of cardboard. However, I've retained the sketch used for drawing the windshield in place. This could facilitate the process of making the windshield somewhat easier. To facilitate easy access to the inside of the fuselage from various directions, I made the top cover openable as well. Once again, the hinge is crafted from a piano hinge and the lock is identical to the window lock. The rudder servo assembly can be removed from the bottom of the fuselage by unscrewing six screws. The servo assembly utilizes a dual servo with levers for adjusting unsynchronized servo movements. The model can optionally be equipped with a hook for glider towing. The entire towing hook assembly is removable from the fuselage by unscrewing eight screws. The servo controls the locking lever. Once unlocked, the towing hook is released, allowing the towing rope to be inserted, and then the locking lever secures the towing hook again. Let's take a look at the wings. The wings utilize ribs cut from plywood. All the ribs are aligned along the front and rear wing spars, with the distance between the ribs determined by the spar webs and spar web fillings, which interlock with each other. To prevent any undesirable twist in the wing, it is essential to construct the wings on a straight, flat surface. Subsequently, other elements such as aileron and flap hinges Leading and trailing edges and the duralumin strut brackets are added to the wing. The wings are covered by balsa sheeting, which is completed with balsa strips glued to the ribs. It's important to note that the strut duralumin brackets must be installed before the sheeting because the screws are not accessible afterward. The wing tips are designed to be made from glass fibre, while the original tips were shaped from balsa wood. The ailerons and flaps are constructed similarly to the wings. It is crucial to ensure that the ribs with aileron and flap hinges and control arms are positioned correctly. Several pieces of plastic tubes are used to secure the hinge wires in place. Both the left and right wings feature servo holders. The servos depicted in the drawing are old high-tech super servos used in the original model but the design can be easily modified to accommodate other types of servos if needed. The servo holder assemblies can be removed by unscrewing four screws per holder. The wing struts are crafted from duraluminum tubes, which are inserted into a fiberglass elliptical sleeve filled with a polystyrene core, cut using a hot wire technique. The wings are slid onto the duralumin, joining tubes inserted in the glass fiber sleeves. Both wings are secured in place by two M6 screws with washers and nuts. The wing struts can be removed by unscrewing the two main screws from the strut holders. If needed, the wing struts can be folded by unclipping two clevises. As mentioned earlier, ease of transportation was one of the main goals during the model design. 
Therefore, the elevator and rudder were made removable as well. The disassembly starts with unscrewing the screw holding the rudder on a controlling plate. Then, the rear screw holding the rear wheel assembly in place is unscrewed and the front screw is loosened. This allows partial rotation of the wheel assembly slightly to the side. Afterwards, the rudder hinge wire can be pulled out. The hinge wire is typically held in place by a small screw, so this screw has to be unscrewed as well. Removing the hinge wire allows for the rudder to be detached from the controlling plate. Please keep in mind that demonstrating this feature requires ungrounding all parts at the tail of the model, marked as grounded beforehand. The process of ungrounding is not depicted here. Now, the vertical stabilizer can be removed. To do so, the screw holding it in place must be unscrewed, as well as the top screw holding the tail wing wire struts. The vertical stabilizer can now be pulled up, unlocking the left and right elevator halves that were held in place by the rudder tenons. However, the bottom wire struts should be released first, for example, by unscrewing the bottom wire turnbuckles. The joining tubes can then be pulled out of their fiberglass sleeves. Assembling goes in the opposite direction. The elevator halves are slid onto the joining tubes and locked in their position by the vertical stabilizer tenons. The wire struts and all unscrewed fixing screws are put back in place. The rudder is positioned on its hinges and secured in place by the hinge wire and fixing screw. The servo holder assemblies in the horizontal stabilizers can be removed after unscrewing their fixing screws. The fiberglass sleeves in the fuselage serve as a channel for wiring harnesses of the elevator servos. The wires of the servos enter the stabilizers via the holes in the ribs. Once the interconnections are made, the joining connectors are pushed into the fuselage. That concludes the basic description of the design I created. I have documented the build process with numerous photos, and these images are available on web pages specifically dedicated to my model designs. The link is provided in the video description. I genuinely hope that this video serves as a source of inspiration for somebody. Thank you sincerely for taking the time to watch. I appreciate the opportunity to share this with you and I hope you found the content enjoyable and insightful. If you have any questions, comments or feedback, please feel free to share them. I value your thoughts. Once again, thank you for your time and interest.